and welcome to another Master of Toastmasters Bay to Bay, where we feature Toastmasters speakers from San Francisco to Monterey. My name is Katherine Pratt, and I'm your Toastmaster, or your host, for tonight's episode. Today we're going to be celebrating change, and what better season to do that than fall? Days are getting shorter, the weather's getting cooler, and even the leaves are starting to change on some of the trees. With the change of the seasons, people are often inspired to start looking at changes within themselves. So if you're looking to improve your communication and leadership skills, there's no better place than your local Toastmasters meeting. If you don't know where Toastmasters is, grab a pen and pencil, and because I'm going to be giving a few information on where you can find out more about us later on. Tonight, we have two speakers and two evaluators. We'll also be featuring a clip of an interview with the 2000, the 2000, sorry, with the 2005, but world's champion of public speaking, Lance Miller. Let's get to our first speaker. We'll be, she'll be working from the Competent Communicator Manual, which is the first manual that all Toastmasters use. Her project is project number nine, Persuade with Power. She's going to be using logic, emotion, and her power of persuasion to change, her, change our opinions about becoming a speaker. Please help me welcome Setha Yin with her speech, Taking the Plunge. Thank you. Let's face it. One of our greatest fears is public speaking. You've probably heard some advice or given some advice on how to approach public speaking. One that I remember when I was in high school was to imagine everyone in front of you wearing an underwear. Yeah, this, you know, this could work for a couple of you, but this didn't really work for me. I was still nervous. But let me, let me ask you this. How can you get over that initial fear of public speaking? Today, I like to approach that question and, and give you some tips and solutions of how to, how to get over that fear of, of public speaking and hope that it would motivate you to become the next speaker. Number one, remember, you don't have to be perfect or brilliant in order to be successful. I've known some people who are just unable to take that first step, forever waiting to attain that state of perfection. You, they wait endlessly for that right moment because they feel like it's not perfect. Well, let me tell you this. That moment might not ever come, forever resulting in this never ending cycle called procrastination. Yes, procrastination. You don't have to be perfect in order to be a good speaker. All that matters is that you're passionate about what you're saying and the audience will appreciate your sincerity. Which leads us to the second topic, number two. Take that plunge and be a speaker. I, I don't know how to put this into words, but the only way I can say is, in order to overcome that fear of public speaking, really, is to go ahead and speak. Yes, I know, it sounds very counterintuitive, but you know what? It's true. The longer we wait to try to overcome this fear, the more intense our fear would become. I remember my first time when I joined Toastmasters, that very first day when I joined, I raised my hand and made sure everyone in Toastmasters knew that I was going to do my first icebreaker speech, the first manual in the CCC manual for Toastmasters, that next week. Why did I do that? Well, number one, so I wouldn't back out. <laughs> and number two was so that I can continue on with the second and third and fourth speech so I can take that next step. So go ahead and give that speech that you have been pondering over for such a long time. You've already enrolled yourself in public speaking organizations like Toastmasters, right? So challenge yourself and move out of that comfort zone, which leads us to number three. Now that you've actually started signing up to becoming a speaker, practice, 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 right? Thomas Edison did say, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. I remember my, the fir first initial stages of uh, public speaking when I was a shy and incompetent speaker to a much more confident speaker now. I remembered practicing my speech at least 10 to 15 times before delivering it in Toastmasters meeting. 
And this preparation really helped alleviate those jitters I would feel on the day of my speech. And it's so important because you would feel much more confident when you're delivering your speech. So don't forget to practice, practice, practice. Public speaking is not an inborn talent, but it's a skill that can be cultivated by anyone. Yeah, there are those natural speakers out there, but really, they also need to practice in order to spruce up their skills. Number four, after delivering your speech and practicing, make sure you celebrate your success. <laughs> Congratulate yourself. As Ralph Waldo Emerson did say, be true to your own act and congratulate yourself for having done something strange and extravagant to break the monotonous of a decorous age. I remember when I, five minutes before I did my icebreaker speech, I was so nervous. I said to myself, why? Why did I do this to myself? Why? Life is too short. Why did I do this? But I couldn't back away. And right after my Toastmaster speech, I swear, this weight just lifted right off of my shoulders, and it felt good. I felt ready to also do my second speech. So reward yourself, however small it might be, and give yourself a pat on the back for overcoming your fear. The four main points again, remember, you don't have to be perfect or brilliant in order to succeed. Number two, take that plunge and be a speaker. Number three, practice, practice, practice. And number four, celebrate your success. Remember, your audience wants you to succeed as well. By taking the plunge, you're already overcoming your fear and doing something about it. So I really hope that all these tips that I've shared with you today will help you and encourage you to become our next speaker. Back to you, Madame Tosmas. <laughs> for your speech, Setha. Can I ask you, what club do you belong to, and how long have you been a Toastmaster? I belong to T Toasters Toastmasters Club in Menlo Park, and I've been in Toastmasters for about two years. That's great. Thanks. Now, I know a lot of people say that Toastmasters changes them. How would you say Toastmasters has changed you? Well, according to my speech, <laughs> I really think it did help me help change me, for instance, overcoming my initial fear of public speaking. And I knew I had to work on that. And that's hence the reason why I joined Toastmasters. But I think the most important thing is that Toastmasters is so encouraging. I get so much support from everyone in the meeting. And it's, it's a great feeling, great feeling. So what would you say if you were talking to, a, to uh, somebody who is on the fence of joining into Toastmasters? On the fence? <laughs> Well, you know, I can't really say join Toastmasters because they would never, you know, believe me. But I would actually make them join, like, come as a guest to our club and have them sit there, sit down as a guest and see what we do and sort of engage on what's interesting for them because everyone has so many different interests. And I think by li them listening to one of our talks, I think they would change their minds. That's great. Now, if you were... You talked about getting ready and practicing 10 times for a speech that you were doing. How do you go about <laughs> practicing for your speech now? <laughs> <laughs> well, practicing for my speech now, I still do at least 10 to 15 because, you know, that feeling of trying to be perfect still gets to me. But I, like I said, I, I don't want to try to be perfect. And, um, and, I, and I do like to practice mostly in front of my stuffed animals because it helps me feel like there's a crowd. <laughs> it works. It works for me. So it might work for you. Right. Thank you so much for, Thank you. for your speech. <laughs> Thank you. Now, one of the great things that we have with Toastmasters is that we have immediate feedback on the speeches that we give. And one way we do this is with a formal evaluation. Our first evaluator tonight is a member of two different Toastmasters clubs. One is San Mateo Toastmasters in Burlingame. And the other is Point of Order Toastmasters in San Carlos. So please help me welcome our first evaluator, Tony the Toastmaster, De Leon. Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, but most of all, Seta. I love the title of your speech, Take the Plunge. It had me curious on what direction you were going to go with that speech. Of course, you pick a topic that's very passionate for me as well. And I saw the passion in your presentation. You talked about taking that first step to speak in front of a group, either by joining Toastmasters or another similar type of organization that literally takes
taking that first step without having to be perfect. I like the structure of your speech because it's that numerical one, two, three style. And you had four points, and you had a nice illustration and a little story for each point. And in your presentation, you talked a little bit about your own experience. And I feel when you talk about yourself, you are sharing and giving us a way of connecting with you because we are all talking about very similar experience or challenge we may be facing. Now something I would like to see a little bit different with your speech because I love the title so much about taking the plunge. And when I think of taking the plunge, my vision is jumping into water. So maybe you may want to talk about the first time you had to go swimming and jumping into the water because that would be a quick way of connecting with everybody because almost everyone has been in water one way or another, taking the plunge to get used to it. So that's an immediate connection with everybody. But not everyone has taken that first step to uh, speaking in front of a group. So knowing that we had one success in our life by surviving an exposure to water, I think would really bring that point home of being successful in front of a group. But same thing, I really enjoy the point I liked the most was the celebration. I feel that it's very important to celebrate every success in life. So therefore, I am inspired by your speech. Thank you very much. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you for those inspiring words, Tony. The next part of our show, we're going to see a roll-in feature with an interview with the 2005 World Champion of Public Speaker, speaking Mr. Lance Miller. He's going to explain, be explaining the value of Toastmasters and how it's an opportunity for change. Let's take a look. Lance Miller, I'm the 2005 World Champion of Public Speaking with Toastmasters International. When I won my World Championship speech, it was on the concept of validating what's right and good in people. And, you know, look, we're all human. We're in, inherently flawed. We're imperfect. It doesn't take any special skill or talent to find an imperfection in another person. Can you find what's good in them and bring that out? Some of the toughest times we have in our life give us the most important lessons that we can carry forward, but we can't carry it forward as baggage. We have to carry it forward as a lesson, and by communicating it and refining it and sharing it with others, we lose the baggage, we gain the lesson. The process of going through Toastmasters helped me find the value in my life. And it wasn't until then that I was really able to see the value in other people and the experiences that they had. And there are so many incredible inspirational moments on a day-to-day -day basis that are sitting right in front of us, but most of us don't even see them. We, we're so preoccupied with our problems or our, what we're, where we're trying to go. We're not looking at the value and the beauty of what's happening right in front of us. And that's one of the big shifts I had by looking for speech topics and being in Toastmasters was appreciating the moment and the lesson of the moment that I could then refine and bring to other people. If you're communicating, you're leading. People are going to listen to you. It's going to affect their life, either on a positive or negative basis, and it's going to give some direction to it. And there's a responsibility that comes with that. And it's the ability to stand there and be able to touch the heart and change the mind and make a better world. I mean, if you're going to go learn tennis or golf, you can go out and practice that, and then you're going to play a tournament, you want to make sure that your skills are honed up for the tournament. But well, there's the tournament of life that we get up every morning and walk out the front door to go do. When do we get an opportunity to practice those skills so that we can continue to excel, but we don't make the mistakes in the tournament, which is on the job, in the community? Toastmasters gives us that environment where we work on our leadership skills, we work on our communication skills, we make mistakes, we screw up, we fail, we find our weaknesses, we, we strengthen those weaknesses, we identify our strengths, we know they're our strengths, so when we go out in the world, we can actually lead and speak. I'd always had a passion for speaking, but I never really knew if I was doing it right or not. And when I came into Toastmasters, I saw the component parts of how all, all these things work, and with that, as I started to learn those, it started to affect other areas of my life in a very positive and dramatic way. And so I have found Toastmasters just to be a great, great organization and a great program to continually develop your communication and leadership skills so that you have those skills honed when you go out in life to accomplish whatever you want to accomplish.
welcome back. We're now going to move on to our second speaker tonight, and it's Bob McComb. He'll be speaking from the Entertaining Speaker Manual, delivering project number one. He recently delivered the speech at his clubs and his area's humorous speech contest. Bob told me that when he was a small child, his mother always told him, son, if you have a sense of humor, you won't have any, if you don't have a sense of humor, you won't have any sense at all. Right now, we're going to see how Bob makes something, some sense out of something that we see every day. Please welcome Bob McCone with his speech, Rebuttals. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. I really don't like commuting, but I love driving in the country on a weekend especially here in beautiful California, because, well, it's stunning. But if I had to tell the truth about it, I really don't look at the scenery all that much. What I look at is your bumper stickers. <laughs> what is up with all your bumper stickers? I mean, I'm not talking about those political ones, right, where because the country is so divided that no matter which one you put on your car, half of the people are convinced you'll be voting for an idiot. So on the left-hand side of my car, I've got Obama-Biden. On the right-hand side, I've got Romney or Ryan. In the middle, I have one that says, I'm voting for the other idiot. <laughs> now, one of the things that I don't like very much, though, is those provocative and contentious bumper stickers. People driving around with a contentious bumper sticker give me no opportunity for any kind of a rebuttal. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Drive up next to them, roll down the window, and start screaming my rebuttals at them? I don't think so. People, they slap some provocative bumper sticker on their car. They must be looking for some kind of a rebuttal. So that got me thinking about the word rebuttal. Because if there are rebuttals, wouldn't there have to have been buttles in the first place? <laughs> so I looked it up. And sure enough, it's a word, buttles, B-U-T-T-A-L-S, buttles. It means a contentious argument. I guess it also means boundaries of some kind. Well, the boundaries thing really works for me, because based on some of the bumper stickers I'm seeing out there, I'm not going near some of those people. So I think what we need is a new law. And that law says if you put a contentious bumper sticker on your car, you have to put your cell phone number right up there with it. <laughs> that way, when I'm looking at your buttles, I can give you my rebuttal. <laughs> so the next time I'm behind some guy who's got a bumper sticker that says I'm only driving like this to annoy you, I can call him up. I can go, hey, I'm only calling you to annoy you. And then I'll hit the redial button like 300 times. You know. <laughs> but then I was thinking, you know, this law is pretty good because it could work like eHarmony or Match.com for drivers, right? Like for the woman who's driving around with a bumper sticker that says, coffee, chocolates, men, some things are better rich. <laughs> yeah. I got me thinking, like, is she driving from the coffee shop to the bank to the candy shop looking for Mr. Wright? Hey, she had her cell phone number up there, she'd have a lot better chance, right? Yeah. I mean, she wouldn't call the person who has the one that says I'm having an out of money experience. But she might call the guy who says, uh, has the bumper sticker that says I'm in no shape to exercise. Because he might be the one with all the chocolates. Oh, you know, or she could call the guy who's having the bald hair day bumper sticker. Because if he's got the money, he's got the chocolates, and he's got the coffee, who cares if he's bald, right? right. I mean, thanks. <laughs> and, you know, but then some women don't want to meet any men. And they could get a bumper sticker that says, not all men are annoying. <laughs> some are dead. Oh. <laughs> the other day, I pulled up behind one of those giant trucks and it had a bumper sticker on it that said, guns, trucks, beer, who needs women? <laughs> right next to it, there's another big truck with a beautiful woman in it with a rifle rack. I'm thinking to myself, they had their phone numbers on there? They could get together for beer and target practice. It might work. On the other hand, if somebody would like to meet someone who's both lazy and a slob, they could look for that bumper sticker that says, uh, hard work never killed anybody but why take the chance? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, 
sometimes the phone numbers could be helpful for some people. For example, for the person who says, of all the things I've lost, I miss my mind the most. If they had their phone number up there, we could help them find their way home. <laughs> right? Could work. Yeah. And then sometimes a good bumper sticker will cue you into the meaning of life. Like the one that says, is this what it's all about? Or don't die wondering. Wondering what? If the hokey pokey is what it's all about, then you left foot in, you put your left foot out. And then you can also get good advice from bumper stickers, like the one that says, when choosing a path in life, avoid the psychopath. <laughs> and that's a lot easier to do if you see that bumper sticker that says, uh, the, uh, what did that one say? I have to think about that for a minute. Psychopath? No. Oh, I just do what the little voices in my head tell me to do. <laughs> so at the end of the day, there'll be a lot less need for rebuttals, if there are fewer rebuttals in the first place. Yeah. So think before you put that bumper sticker on your car that says, I'm annoying the world one person at a time. And have a nice day. Thank you for that hilarious speech, Bob. Oh, you're very welcome. Which club do you come from? I belong to two clubs. I belong to the Foster City Toastmasters Club, where I am the Vice President of PR. Mm -hmm. And I also belong to the Pro Toasties Club in San Mateo. OK. And how long have you been a member of Toastmasters? Well, about a year now. That's great. What, how do you think Toastmasters has changed you? Well, Toastmasters has given me an opportunity to add structure to my speeches. I've had a lot of opportunity to do some speaking. But I learned a lot of insider tips and strategies and techniques that have helped me with my speaking. That's great. Now, I'd like to make a rebuttal to your rebuttal speech. Please do. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, the, the cell phone law right now, that'd be a little problematic with your, with your speech. Yes, How I'm, do you think that's going to fit? Uh, I'm with? a scofflaw. I've always been a scofflaw. Oh, okay. <laughs> Would you explain that? <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've always taken the road less traveled. Absolutely. So it, when you're driving along, you don't mind calling the... Well, I, I do have a hands-free device. Oh, perfect. I, I just tell Siri, call this guy 300 times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's a great way to, to annoy her, yeah, to, yeah, that's very good. to make your rebuttal. Yeah. So you, your mother told you, gave you the, the advice that if you don't have... No, she said, son, if you didn't have a sense of humor, you wouldn't have any sense at all. Mm -hmm. And do you believe it? No. Oh, we should put it on a bumper sticker. Uh, you can I make would. your rebuttal. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so you were originally a member, uh, you had competed in a humorous contest. Can you give us a word or two about contest speaking? So I think contests give us an opportunity to stretch ourselves. Mm -hmm. And if we want to achieve new dimensions in our life, we have to look for opportunities to stretch ourselves. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for stretching yourself today and speaking on Beta Bay. My pleasure to be here. <laughs> thank you. ready for the feedback on Bob's speech and our second evaluator comes from Electric Toasters in Palo Alto. Please help me welcome Molly Dahl. Thank you, Madam President. Welcome guests and viewers of Bay to Bay and especially Bob. Rebuttals. I'm a paralegal so of course I was intrigued. You asked me to listen for only one thing, whether or not the speech was funny. Of course it was. We laughed. And we laughed knowingly. We've all seen bumper stickers that made us react in those ways. Man, I wish I could call that so-and-so and let them know that, yes, they did succeed in annoying me. That would be great. I like the outline of the speech. I'm a person who thinks in outlines. So how I heard your speech was you started with the political bumper stickers, quite apropos. We're going to be voting in about a month. And then there are the rebuttable presumptions. We all have our opinions about those. And then you tied it up very nicely with a bow with your philosophic bumper stickers. What is life all about? And what is the deal with the hokey pokey? How effectively did you use descriptions? I could picture you calling that annoying driver in front of you. But I did wonder what the CHP would think about that. 
and your conclusion, as I said before, did put a nice bow on things. How could you have improved? I would have started, instead of with a very soft monotone, with a little more vocal variety, and maybe start with, I'm voting for the other idiot. That would have caught my attention. I would have been at the edge of my seat, waiting to hear the explanation of three bumper stickers on the back of your car. That would have been great. What is your strongest asset? I love your conversational style, the way you bring us all in, as if we're in the car with you and sharing that reaction. And what I enjoyed most about your speech was the fact that your vocal variety and your volume increased as you got into the speech and wrapped it up with a very strong note. Thank you very much. Thank you, Molly. So are you ready to make a change in your communication and leadership skills? Well, if you are, get your pen and paper, because I'm about to tell you two ways that you can get started. All of us are part of District 4 Toastmasters. We stretch from San Francisco all the way to, to Monterey. Our website, to find out more information, is www.d4tm.org. And if you live outside of the Bay Area, you can find out more by going to Toastmasters International website, www.toastmasters.org. Toastmasters is one of the most exciting ways to come out of your comfort zone and to make that change in your, in your communication and your leadership skills. Eight years ago, if anyone told me that I would be able to speak in front of groups of people, lead groups of people in my work and outside of the community, or even host a television show, I wouldn't have believed them. But that's the power of Toastmasters. Thank you to all of our speakers and evaluators today. And from all of us at Toastmasters Bay to Bay, thank you for watching, and good night. Well, thank you, Dan. Yeah, thank you.